Jay's Tunnel here. We're actually going and looking for sea urchins today. So let's go find some. Okay, so there is a sea urchin. We call this the red sea urchin. Uh, also the purple uh, sea urchin. But this is one of the most common ones that we have here in the Gulf of Mexico. And so we've got a little uh, bin over here, like a little aquarium we're gonna put it inside of and uh, see how it moves around. We're actually in Port Aransas, Texas. We're out on the jetty. And a lot of people don't know that there's actually sea urchins out on these rocks out here. And this is one of the coolest animals we have around here, and I've never done a video on it, so I thought this might be the perfect opportunity to be able to do that. And so this is the red sea urchin. Uh, sometimes it's called the Atlantic purple sea urchin. Uh, it has a scientific name, uh, Arbacea punctulata. And so, you know, in the science world, uh, we always have uh, scientific names for all different kinds of organisms, and that's how we uh, communicate in the science world. But for today, we'll just say the red sea urchin. So these are found around the rocks, and uh, we found them about halfway out. Now, these, these jetties are probably somewhere around, I don't know, a quarter mile long or something. It's way out here. And about halfway out is whenever we started seeing them, individual ones at least, uh, in between the rocks and uh, algae covered all around them, which is a lot of what they eat. So they're considered uh, uh, omnivores, uh, but a lot of what they eat is algae. And so um, that's primarily where you would see them. Now I've got it put inside of a little jar here that I've got and so to keep it safe. But these things can actually live out of the water uh, for quite some time, like hours. Uh, you can think about some of the places they live, like in low tide, they would be exposed. So they have to be able to live in uh, certain situations, depending on the species, uh, depending on where uh, the tides are, up or down. Um, they, the other, one of the coolest things about these, I think, is the lifespan. So these things can actually live, uh, they think, somewhere around a hundred years old. And, you know, when I first started looking into these, I thought, okay, maybe five years or something. But a hundred years? And actually, if you get up to some of the colder climate areas, you'll actually find them to where they can live up to 200 years. And of course, that depends on the species as well. But this red sea urchin is supposed to be able to live somewhere around 100 years old. So these things move around. I'll put some video up here of the spines moving, but they also have tube feet come out. And so those tube feet have uh, little suckers on them. And so that's how they can move around. Now, these things, they're not just real easy to pick up. I mean, I actually had to use, um, you know, a knife to be able to tr try to pry it away. So the suckers that they have on the feet are really strong. And uh, so don't just think that you can go out there and pull them up real quick. So real carefully, you can use a knife to be able to get them up. Um, some people eat them. So these are a delicacy in some countries. And actually, if you go and you eat at sushi, uh, you will find uh, something called uni, U-N-I, and uh, that's what they put on top of the sushi. It's actually the gonads filled with eggs that they put on top of uh, rice. And so it's kind of got a uh, fishy flavor. I actually tried it before. Uh, but yeah, a lot of these are uh, edible and they're considered delicacies in many countries. So the, what do you think the predators would be on this? Like what is gonna actually try to eat these things? Uh, sea turtles. Sea turtles are one of the main predators. And so we've got a lot of sea turtles coming up and down this jetty. And so you can probably guarantee that they're looking for some of these. Um, the spines are, if you ever get stuck by one of these, and I have, actually just a few months ago, I had got about 15 spines in my hand. I was surfing um, in, down in Nicaragua and I caught this wave. I got pushed to the bottom, drug me across cobblestone that had these things all in there. And I had about 15 spines that stuck in my hand for about two months. 
my skin actually started dissolving them. I didn't get any that were infected. You know, they, were, they weren't really deep. If they were really deep, you might actually have to go to the doctor or something to get them out. Uh, but for me, it was, uh, I just left them in there. Um, I was able to pull some of them out, but they're uh, made out of calcium carbonate. And so you can actually put your hand in vinegar and vinegar dissolves calcium carbonate. I don't know if you ever put like a, an oyster shell in vinegar, but that will actually, you'll see bubbles coming off of it. That vinegar is actually eating away at the calcium carbonate. And so that is, uh, that, that's what they're made out of. These are echinoderms. And so they are closely related to the sea stars and the sand dollar. And so if you ever looked at a sand dollar, and I've done a video on one of those where I sped up uh, the time, it was like a time lapse where it's crawling on the sand, you can actually see all the spines and it moving across the sand. And so it kind of gives you a visual of, you know, the, how uh, related they are uh, to each other uh, with these spines. Now this is about the full size adult that you would find, about uh, three inches in size. Uh, for the Red Sea Urchin. You can find these uh, all the way up from Massachusetts on the Atlantic Ocean, all the way down to the Lesser Antilles, and of course in the Gulf of Mexico. Some of the organisms we talk about in the ocean, um, they're considered hermaphrodites, where one individual is both male and female. Now, these are actually separate individuals, so this could be a male, it could be a female. Uh, they get together and they can actually have several million eggs. Uh, that the female can lay. Now, uh, there's a couple of different things why researchers like these. These have transparent eggs so they can see inside of them and they're fast growing. So there's been a lot of research done on uh, uh, using these because of the way they grow. Okay, so one of the other cool things about this sea urchin and all sea urchins is that they have a structure of muscles around their mouth and five triangle teeth that can scrape and bore and drill into the toughest of rocks. So actually me sitting here with this on my hand kind of makes me a little bit nervous, but uh, seeing how slow they move, I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so if you actually want to be able to get one of these, you know, uh, it is easy to get stuck by one. Uh, but if you absolutely wanted to get one, put it in water, check it out, and then release it. We always release all the animals. Uh, we don't want to cause any harm to them. But if you break their spines, uh, don't worry. They can grow them back. Uh, it takes about uh, just a couple of weeks for them to grow a spine back. So, well, with that, uh, that is the sea urchin and the ones that you can find here in the Gulf of Mexico. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll catch you back on the next one. Thanks. Bye.